On August 8th, Kenyans will go to elect their fifth president of the Republic of Kenya. Then the choice of your president will depend on your vote. And remember, that is the only thing that you have, guys, that can help you. That is the only tool that you can use to choose who becomes the president. It is also no denial that the presidential race is now a two-horse race between Raila Odinga and William Samuel Ruto. If there is another third force that will come in the name of One Kenya Lands or any other formation, then I think we are all ready to see. William Ruto is getting a very good support. William Ruto has an alliance with Musalia Mudavadi, Mosa Swetangula, and is posed to pick his running mate from central Kenya. Raila Dinga on the other side in the Azimila Umoja coalition is getting the support or the blessings of President Uhuru Kenyatta and also trying to form alliance with small parties around Mount Kenya. But the only point of convergence between William Ruto and Raila Dinga is that both of them are set to name their running mates from central Kenya. Now, in this analysis, I want to deviate a bit from the running mate narrative because the, we have really been made to understand that whoever the choice of running mate is going to decide the number of votes you are going to get, especially from central Kenya on August 8th. I wanted this lens to look at William Samoy Ruto. What do you think that William Ruto can do right to cleverly might win against Raila Odinga. Now, one of the things that William Ruto, I think, should do is to make sure that he does credible nominations. The nominations that are going to be held in April, I want to say that nomination one, it is an exercise to help parties get a single candidate, and two, it is also a good exercise to the, uh, to the voters to get a very competent aspirant. For the party, they are looking at competency and also the, the, the influence or rather the popularity of the candidates. Because if you pick a popular candidate, then you can highly, you have high chances of winning that position. The reason why I think William Ruto should get nominations very credible so that he can get popular candidates on the ground. When you get popular candidates on the ground, you can easily convert those votes to your end. If you get a popular candidate in an MCA, governor and senatorial seat, really it is highly possible for you to garner good votes. Another reason why you need to get popular candidates that are the choice of the people is to avoid voter apathy on the election day. One of the reasons why most you will realize that voters from Nyanza don't turn up to vote on the D-Day is because of what they call as unbiased, biased and shambolic party primaries. And ODM have been fighting this for quite some time. When you get a candidate that people don't like, so you go and pick and uh, the, the popular candidate goes with independent then the candidate, the party candidate, uh, is, is, is the, the ticket is given to a weak candidate. What that means is that voters normally got disgruntled. They actually, um, they, they are angry with the party and they don't feel like even going to vote. So if William Ruto can do credible nominations in UDA so that he get good, good candidates, it's going to be a plus for him. Secondly, I think also UDA party his party is going to be seen as a party of true democracy. So that is one thing that I think he needs to get right. Secondly, if they can reconsider and form coalitions with the small parties. I think this narrative that William Ruto is taking to the podium, telling the parties that he's not going to form coalition with village parties, it is quite detrimental to his presidential bid. If it were not for that statement, William Ruto will still be working with Moses Kuria.
William Ruto will still stand a chance to get at least one governor from Ukambani, at least one governor from Meru, who is uh, Kiretu Muringi with the bus, and even West Pokot, Lonyagampu has his own party. So, but the reason why the reason why he cannot work with this, he cannot get these these leaders behind him, is because he has put a ceiling on what the threshold of the parties that can work with UDA. So when he's, if he can reconsider that, he can easily get these leaders. I'm very sure that if it were not for that issue of working small parties, Kibuda Kibwana was actually rumored to be willing to work with William Ruto. Um, uh, El Geo, um, West Pokot governor, Lonyangapuo, would easily work with the UDA if his party is not called as a small village party. Same to Moses Kuria. So when you get these small parties around and they form bigger part of that Kenya Kwanzaa coalition, I think he would have stood a very good chance to win. But then this is a card that Ray Loding already have because Azimula Umoja is more accommodative. Um, guys, I'm also looking at my third point on the bottom-up model. I think the packaging is well. They have an idea of what they mean by bottom-up approach. But from where I'm sitting, I think that the people down there, the voters they want to convince, do not have an understanding of the bottom-up approach. Because William Ruto, in his mind, he has exactly what he envisions with the bottom up, and he uses, he actually says that bottom up model have been implemented in US by Joe Biden. But then the people down there doesn't understand. The way it is being packaged, they don't understand. Because I think it should be redefined, it should be redesigned so that to maybe to a policy that people can understand. You are, I want to tell you this with Uhuru, uh, Railo Dinga Social Protection Fund. The 6,000 is talking about. The 6,000 is talking about can be, is a policy, is a program. So because it is a program, you can easily question. So Raila can easily be asked, you are going to give this money. How are you going to give it? Where are you going to get that money? When you see Railo Dinga explaining to people how he's going to do it and how he's going to get that money what only makes what you understand is that people know what he's talking about but but the bottom up uh, approach i think for me i might understand because of course i'm in the political space and i can do my research but someone who cannot do the research who cannot really understand because they talk about uh, empowerment at the World Fund, where, where they're going to at least allocate some billions for people at the World Fund, uh, at the world level, to be getting loans, uh, to be getting finances. What they're not telling them, are you giving them loans? Are you giving them grants? You should make that very clear. And so that people know, because Kenyans know, if it is loans, Kenyans have ever interacted with loans, and they know, you must tell them how your loan is going to be very special. Secondly, you, you talk uh, figuratively about Mamamboga, about um, about Mutuakuza Nyama, about the border border. It is very good, but then you should give it. How are you going to wire this money to them? And is it just something that government is just giving us as, as, as the 6,000 stipend or what is it? So, so I think people need, if he makes it sink to Kenyans, it can be a very good selling because already the youth have actually embraced what he's talking about when he speaks about the bottom-up approach. So guys, uh, that is something that I also need to see. Lastly, I think, not second last, I think William Ruto also did to be humility. Just be humble. You know, there is something that the kind of politics that William Ruto is doing is what Raila has been doing for better part of the year. And now if you see now, you, I, I listened to Peter Kenneth when he was hosting Raila in Murango saying that Naona uyu mze hapa ni mnyenyekevu. So the humility cards, Kenyans need someone who is humble and William Ruto could easily play this very easily because he's been a victim of state harassment, of, of being branded names and people don't, the government seems not to support him and that. So if he played the humility 
Kenyans would buy that. But I think he has diverted from that. Initially, William Ruto was selling or CC to Nunyanyaswa or that. But now he's now changed. He's now telling them, he's now telling the government that Mutaju Hamjui. I think that arrogance lately to Kenyans is not going to convert to the poor. Because you can see what Azimelo Moja team are saying that these people are so bitter and cannot even run a government. But if you would have at least take a second and think and go back to that humility. Let him just play the humility card as if unataka hautaki. Uh, in my church, uh, I once, there is a very good friend of mine called Pastor Zenga who says that when you want to sing, you sing as if you don't want to sing. Eh? You start as if you don't mean it. Then hapumbele unashika moto. I think that's what William Ruto should do. He should not make 2022 a do or die. The reason why he's so arrogant is because he has made it a do or die. Anyone who is coming against his bid is a total enemy. And that is undoing on his side. So that is something that I think he is getting wrong. Lastly, there is something that if William Ruto does, then he can become the president as early as 8 a.m. William Ruto is trying to bury his head in the sand and he's trying to make voters believe that the deep state doesn't exist personally i don't have an understanding of a deep state but i think william ruto himself knows what this deep state is he knows how deep it is he understands what they can do but he keeps on telling them that there is nothing they can do so my point here is let william ruto dine with the kings I'm not ruling out a possibility. And think about it. If the deep state realize that, okay, Raila Odinga cannot win, why don't they come up with Raila Ruto ticket? So that Raila Odinga becomes the president, Ruto, Ruto cannot be a running mate, of course. They can come up with the Raila Ruto ticket in the event that because Ruto cannot be a running mate, Ruto steps back, let Raila carry the ticket, let him become the president. After that, Ruto be given maybe a powerful post. That is something there. And not even so, they can still, I, I think if he dines with the deep state, even if he wins, because Raila Odinga's supporters believe something here, that Raila have won elections. And in 2007, he won. 2013 and 2017 are contestable. I still, I don't know. Even me and you don't know who won. But I think... Raila supporters believe that one thing that has made Raila not to become a president is lack of political goodwill. So in my deep state, my point in deep state is William Ruto needs the political goodwill. He needs people who are not just cheerleaders in the name of Rigadi Gashagwa, Eli Swahomi, Nidi Nyoro, and Kimani Shungwa. You need also powerful people around you who can also hand over the power to you. It is true that the power belongs to the people, but it reaches a point where the people, the, the power that belongs to the people is given to you by other people. So I think that is something that William Ruto needs to work in. Someone was asking me in this channel that, Kevin, do you believe that if William Ruto wins election, are there some superpowers somewhere that if William Ruto has 51 plus 1 percent and Raila Odinga have 48 percent, they can make sure that William Ruto doesn't become a president? What I know is this, guys. This politics is going to be in two phases. And if people are determined to become, if this deep, deep state is determined to block William Ruto presidency, they can make sure that this election goes to a rerun. Then between August to October, where the rerun is, the politics can become very dirty and William Ruto might never see it. So guys, that's my point where I think he needs to dine with the king. So you can also get to a comment section and tell us what exactly you think. I'm also here in my next video, I'm going to look at critical analysis on something still on William Ruto's campaign.